Hi guys, my name is Wilfred and this video is about the comparison between the Marvel Heroes versus the Diablo 3 uh, from the in-game progression point of view. And also I'm going to play a little bit of Diablo 3 as well because I think a lot of you whom I know through this channel is uh, from the Marvel Heroes world. So just to demonstrate a little bit about the uh, a little bit of progress I have on my Necromancer. And by the way, I managed to get my Necromancer to level 70 under 2 hours. So I don't know whether it's fast or slow, but I think I could have done it a little bit faster. But in any case, uh, I've been, I have two Necromancer. One is the one that I play alone uh, when I'm with friends and so on. Another one is the one that I'm playing with my wife. So I like a different pace to it. When I'm playing with my wife, I experience the storyline, experiment the different kind of build and kind of skill and so on. But when I'm with myself, uh, I just want to go for the progress, like, you know, get to end game ASAP. So this video is all about the comparison between the two. And by the way, um, I'm now running in a Torment 2. So in this video, I'm going to get a Rift key. And after that, I'll do a maybe Torment 3 Rift. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> so now, Rise of the Necromancer is just a new class being released in Diablo 3. Um, for those who have been playing Marvel Heroes perspective, it is not like new whereby a new heroes release. And because you have got other heroes you have as well, it helps your you, you gear your, your, your new heroes, right? So it, same as for me, I have a Crusader, uh, level 70. I've been farming like Greater, Greater Reef uh, 60 myself and so uh, in a group is 70. So I've managed to get a little bit of like, uh, you know, decent stuff, a little bit kickstart for my for my Necromancer, same as in Marvel Heroes world. Uh, but the main difference is that, you know, if, if you know, if, you, if you're aware from the Marvel Heroes side, uh, once you start uh, the, the hero at level 60, and you have a whole set of artifact, bless it, you know, according to whatever blessing you have. Uh, and then after that, uh, you probably will have uh, quite a number of unique boxes that you can open up uh, and then just bam, your whole character is kind of like there and you can start to do end game. And after that, you probably just wait for the RNG kind of kicks in uh, to, to see whether you get, get a loot or not. You keep farming a terminal all the time, like 100 times or whatnot, uh, trying to see if that loot drop for, to fill the one slot. So for Necromancer perspective, I also have some kind of kickstart first uh, in terms of the progress. Uh, no, right now, I've already played a little bit like I've played a couple of rifts, so my gear progress. But uh, I've got things like uh, this one, it was from my, I've got extra kind of like a amulet, set amulet from my uh, Crusader. I was just farming it. Uh, so I reforged the first one uh, because it was strength. It always drops according to the character. My Crusader is a melee hero, so it's strength. So I changed the first stat into intelligence. Uh, and after that, I managed to get a ring as well, uh, which go with the, you know, uh, my, my amulet. So that is the first kickstart I have, and I get a set bonus there and there. Also, I've got legendary gem as well, being of the powerful rank 60, that I got it from my Crusader as well. So that was more or less the thing that I kickstart with. The rest of it, the gear that I have to find myself. And this one is the one that I managed to get it, you know, with my Crusader, I managed to try to farm this item. Somehow it was, it was lucky. Uh, and also I started off with the Gem of Ease, which uh, helped me to lower the level requirement of this weapon to level one. So from the leveling perspective, I can use a level 70, um, kind of like a legendary to, to do content. That's why it's so fast. Uh, but after that, I changed another rune, uh, another gem to it. But that's all about it. That's all that I have. Now, uh, in Diablo 3, there are a couple of things you can do. Now, you can do uh, adventure mode, which is in Marvel Heroes, it's like share quest, but it's actually a lot more fun than share quest itself. It's quite a lot of like, um, you know, they randomize each, uh, each this is uh, Act 4, but you can actually do different act, like Act 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, each of them will have a set of quests, uh, like a, like a, you know, I think it's a legendary quest in Marvel Heroes world. And, you know, it, once you complete all five of them, you get a big bonus. And inside, uh, there are also more gear uh, for you to grab, like really like nice, also have in-game currency I'll talk a little bit about later. But the good thing about this is that you can play with a friend. Uh, so in Marvel Heroes, you can only you can't do legendary quests with your friends. However, there's something called share quest. Uh, but share quest is not that interesting. It doesn't connect back to the story um, like like the uh, Diablo three. It's sort of like you know get a bit of story here and there to just remind you of the uh, how far you've got from the journey itself. So it's really nice. Now. 
besides the huge amount of XP and whatever go bonus or uh, whatever in the box itself, uh, you can get something called Blood Shard. Um, I've got a video on a guide on how to start your endgame journey in Diablo 3. Do check that one out if you have time. But something called Blood Shard. Now, Blood Shard is something that uh, like an in-game currency that earn really nicely on all the endgame content. Uh, I can only say the equivalent in Marvel Heroes could be the Odin Mark. But then Odin Mark, you have to pay to get the currency boost in order to get a decent amount as fast as what you get in Diablo 3. Otherwise, it's just not quite there. Odin Mark is not easy to earn. So once you get this plus shot, what you can do is that you can talk to this person Don't here and you can start buying random boxes here. Uh, and all this uh, corresponding to all this gear. So what happened is that as you go through your end game journey, you actually have a chance to gear all this slot while you are um, also getting this kind of items uh, dropped from, from the game itself. So that is also part of the fun thing. I managed to get a set item through this method here. So this one I got it from the, uh, from the blood shard. Uh, which is one of the set four set items of Necromancer. So Necromancer has four set items. Again, uh, it is it is fun in a sense that uh, in Marvel Heroes, once you get the unique, is it? But that's it. There's nothing else to it to look forward to. But in Necromancer, for example, I've got a set called this one is called uh, whatever set it is called. I don't know, man. It's the it's a trial trial alls uh, Valtar. Then you've got another set called the uh, Rathma, for example. So you have different sets. Uh, of course, you're supposed to match it, but now I don't really have choices, so I, I get what I can. And, uh, and, and that's about it, really about farming and improving all the gears, combining the set and stuff like that. Something that in Marvel Heroes, you don't really have at all. Basically, it's just playing with stats in Marvel Heroes. Even later on, when you go to the cosmetic kind of like cos cosmic kind of items, it is randomized affixes. You need to keep matching, matching of them uh, for... Mm -hmm. For Diablo 3, there's a lot of very cool things. Like for example, I've got these items from the um can't remember from one of the chests. And it says that uh, cold skill uh, that uh, deal more damage and so on and so forth. So after that, guess what? I changed my entire bill to to deal more cold damage. Now I could stick with my original bill, but because end game is where the starting of end game is where the fun begins for Diablo 3 in my opinion because you you don't have everything yet your your end game is not quite there yet but then you can start to use some build that satisfy the gears that you have uh, one by one and stuff like that so um, so it's something that is rather interesting uh, a lot of stuff that I've managed to grab from the uh, from, from from the from the boxes and also from various like uh, chests and so on and I will continue buying all these items to fulfill all this like you know I want to change this into a probably legendary and so on and so forth and that's one of them another thing is that uh, if you look into Marvel heroes uh, it, you know how other heroes unlock help you is through the hero synergy right so you know hero synergy give you kind of bonus to here and there uh, but that's about it there's nothing really you get it from other heroes onto onto your current heroes as for Diablo 3, there's something called the cube. The Kanai cube is something that uh, you, you can get a legendary item like this one here, right? And you can extract the orange tags, uh, which is cold skill, deal X amount of damage, and so on and so forth, the maximum value of it. Extract it and use it to any heroes that you have across your account. So like for example, because I farm items like this and this and this in the past, I can augment my character with the legendary extracted from other characters I have. But that's not it. That's not the end of it. Because from the progression point of view, there are still a lot of things that is very much um, class specific, specific. So I may have things that are very generic that I can use across all uh, classes, but I still need to farm stuff. So the excitement is still there. I still need to look for items that I do not have. There's still quite a fair bit of farming, but it's not from zero. I have something to start with. Right, so that is something that I find it quite, you know, interesting as well. I can I can do that, and also in order to extract the uh, items as well, you need to have a crafting to it. So that crafting, like you need all this material, uh, like you know, rune, nightshade, tapestry, flesh, holy water, and breath, whatever it is. And uh, a lot of these items are farmed through the through the whole bounty kind of thing. So each app will have a chest that contains the crafting material. So it encourages you to play a little bit of bounty as well, not just call, doing all the rifting. Okay, so now, enough said. Uh, the Necromancer I'm playing is a little bit of uh, a summoner, but a little bit of, um, you know, uh, I, 
I don't do too high end right now. I'm just <coughs> having fun experimenting. So I have uh, let's 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 take a look at my build here, uh, just to so that later on when you see the video, you can relay. The first thing first, I have the uh, bone spike as my uh, main spender. Well, it's not a spender, it's a basic power that generate the essence here. And I use the frost, like I said, because I have a legendary frost uh, that will buff frost damage. I, I pick this guy up, uh, that will give me frost. It, they deal cold damage, but I could like, this one is physical, you know, some of them is poison, some of them is physical. So it's kind of interesting. The tech changes uh, based on the based on the kind of like runes that you have. So this is the first one I've got. <clears throat> um, I don't really like the mage, but then I think mage is pretty powerful stuff. Uh, there are many things you can do. You can either summon a, like just one single mage, or for me, because like I said, I'm doing cold damage. So I pick a cold mage uh, that give me like archer, but they are poison as well. So cold, poison, physical, and stuff like that. So there are many options out there. So that's the one I have, you'll see later, the mage look like that. Right, so this is a mage itself, right? So um, then after that, I have something called revive. Revive's the one that as I, as I kill enemy, I can revive them back to be my summon for a period of time. So that's what re revive does, up to 10 corps. Uh, there, there, again, there are many options out there. Uh, it should come as no surprise that I picked the cold one as well. So everything just geared towards cold right now, for now. Uh, golem wise, okay, so hang on. Skeleton is the one that you see here. <coughs> These are auto summon. These are all skeleton that are auto summon, and uh, and you can direct them, command them, and stuff like, stuff like that. Uh, that I rather I actually use it to heal myself. Uh, for this, I mean, I could do a cold one as well, uh, but I, I somehow I feel that in in some scenario I feel my my character a little bit um, you know fragile, so I do a little bit of healing. And as for the golem, uh, I use the blood golem, which also a little bit of healing as well. So I've got two power for healing, not just outright DPS, a little bit of balance approach. And last but not least, I've got the blood rush, which is basically um, um, uh, allow me to teleport around the map. And uh, usually it will consume my health in order to do that, but I put a rune to not to consume my health. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, about my health. And the uh, last but not the least, from a passive perspective, I've got one that um, increased the duration of my minions as well as the mage. Uh, I've got one that reduced the cooldown of my uh, golem. And last but not the least, I've got the uh, life on hit as well. So that is basically my build. So I hope you relate to it. After that, uh, you see what I do. So now, uh, when it comes to the Rift, there are two types. One is the Nephilim, uh, which is free uh, to play. Well, everything is free to play in a sense, but uh, you can go in anytime. Uh, you can grab ma material inside. Uh, there's no time limit on how long it takes. And there's something called the Greater Rift uh, that you can set the difficulties. And also, um, you, there's a time limit to earn a bonus. And also, if you, if you remain undefeated, you get extra chance to upgrade the legendary gems that you have. So let me just go ahead and do a Nephilim first. So this is the part that I can like. Uh, there are probably some mobs around. Quite quiet. So I can skip summoning summoning the mobs everywhere, and uh, just uh, I think I just push through. The cultists were performing a strange ritual when I saw them today. One of their number stood soundlessly, while others thrust long spikes deep into his spine. See all these corpses on the ground, I can actually um, I believe that you may have raise them. Darkly empowered now there's an Elise coming around and I just need to make sure that I don't die here and uh, shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> I'm afraid you not. So I just make sure that I, this one dies so that I can get the uh, progress here. The progress bar is based on the number of enemy that you kill. So another good thing about Diablo is that the, uh, all the trash mob, although you try to get elite, uh, is rather useful as well. Um, <clears throat> another elite and I'm using my blood golem. And I'm spamming a bit more blood, blood uh, mage, trying not to stand on bad stuff.
<laughs> What's up with the chicken, man? Seriously. So I can summon quite a few. Ten cops. You can see all the indicators there. Uh, one, one mage, nothing. So, <clears throat> oh wow, a bomb. So I uh, just go a bit faster, and this is the one that I use a blood golem <clears throat> to pawn. I can direct my uh, mobs to the pet to the to the mob there. That is not possible. This world can abide you no longer. Okay, so uh, let me just start to uh, summon again. So, all in all, the pet just does its own thing. Uh, I can sort of stay alive. Again, uh, so this is the blood golem in, in, in action. You should have spam a bit of blood. Uh, you see, there's a set item already. So, I've got one set item. Uh, let me see whether it'll be useful to me or not. And it'd be rather good if it does. So that is another level going down. Level three. Um, I mean, so far the pace is rather nice. Uh, I could teleport, of course. I can uh, put some mages here and there. And this is the big guy. Get the um, golem inside. Yeah, I get some mage as well. Resummon and uh, try not to <laughs> get caught between all these things. Uh, resummon a bit. Yeah, so. I can. Uh, there's a lot of mobs here, seven of them. I can do ten. Yeah, so this is a good place, uh, at least I think uh, a little bit faster there. Okay, so this guy is rather hard, he hit really hard, and he's a waller as well, so I have to be careful. You can definitely one-shot me uh, if I'm not careful. Uh, don't get one-shot. <laughs> Okay, so that's done. And guess what? You can summon them as well. <laughs> nice, huh? So these are the one. Of course, it's a little bit smaller. Uh, yep. So just pressing on. There's another guy here. I use the blood golem. Spam a bit of mages. Ah, no, 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 no. Hang on. Whoa, that was close, man. I was jailed. So for a moment, I couldn't quite move. Uh, grab all these things. Yeah, some maps are a lot of mobs and easier. Some maps probably a little bit harder. Again. Uh, Oh, this one I can spam a lot of power. Just now the the, the Pyron has a, has a very special power that I can use. Right, so some chests here. The night embraces you. I must wait. Yep, this is the uh, pool of reflection and that's about it. So you just keep destroying and keep raising that and just press forward. 
with a mage and uh, just push map like this. So, it, so there's a there's there's a golem. All right, so this is a lot of gems there. Eh? And by the way, looting is very easy as well. Um, Have been robbing our merchants. When pursued, they simply open portals and disappear with the most aggravating chuckle. Peasantry seem to believe that the goblins serve a great demon lord known as Greed. And furthermore, that their portals lead to Greed's domain. So I'm trying to get more cops now, six of them. Alright, so it's just a little bit more. Okay, so I've done this, I've done that, maybe, I don't know. This map is not my favorite map because uh, usually it's, uh, it's a place that I can go. But uh, I don't know where really. Not there, and probably somewhere below. I don't know. Yeah, and each map is kind of different. So every time you come here, it's a little bit different experience. Uh, rather than like, um, I think in some games like Marvel Heroes, the terminal is exactly the same. And after you run it for like uh, an hour or two, you just get a little bit fatigued uh, from that perspective. All right, so this is the one that goes into the next stage. Okay, let's see. Turbulent Approach 4. So all these things are a little bit different. Okay, now the boss come out and uh, where is he? Is there? Yep, so that's it. I've got, I've got quite a lot of items here. Um, so let me go back to town. Long ago, five clans of the Umbaru tribe left the Taganze and ventured north. After their transformation into Kaza, only a few elders were still able to use magic, and they So I got a new transmog. Oh, I got a set item here. These are the Kaza shaman. Uh, they rank among the most dangerous of their race. So that's good because I've got the the leg item, which is oh no, sorry, the head item. So I'll get this one here. So I need to do all I need to do just uh, get the gems out. Um, I probably remove the gem for this guy here. No longer require. You see. This is, this is fun, right? I mean, um, gear progression, really nice. Uh, so, I can just put this one in. And this is a set item. Um, I probably need to re-roll some of this, like a stat, but I'll just leave it as it is right now. How does it look like? Well, it looks a little bit more bloodish kind of thing. <laughs> yep, so that is my character here, uh, with a matching kind of like... Um, scepter or whatever you call it and uh, then after that I could also um, so I'll see whether any of this is good any good or not just go through it uh, with I mean you know probably may not be uh, but you never know sometimes and could be could be for a follower as well and uh, nope so none of this is uh, is good so far so all I can do is just to salvage them one click two click and three click I mean you know that's it that's basically the um, so-called uh, inventory management, which is rather rather easy and simple as well. Um, and after that, I just need to chuck all these things into my gems place. And the and since I have two necromancer, why don't I uh, keep this one for my second for my necromancer as well? So now I've done this. Uh, next bit I could do, of course, I can close this guy and get a bit of XP. And I could also, like for example, I get the uh, some of the blood shard. I can use it to purchase the items from uh, Kadala, uh, which is 
but it's not really a lot like for example just to demonstrate right i need a bracer so i could actually say uh why not just buy some bracer here right so uh, uh, uh. I cannot afford so that. I've got two of them. Normally you can do a little bit more when you are doing bounty and stuff like that, but just a quick demo. So none of this is useful. I can recycle them as material, right? So, but at least there's some, I hope that perhaps I can get something from it. So now uh, let's do a greater riff here. Um, I probably could do one that I was doing a torment too. I don't know, man. I uh, <laughs> torment three is a little bit hard. Uh, I don't know whether my gear can do torment three or not. I tell you what, I mean, let, let's just for the fun of it, let's try torment three. This is going to be a little bit hard for me, but uh, we'll we will see. Yeah, it's hard. The kill time is uh, it's not as good as the uh, the other one, so. But we'll see, I mean, you know, you never know uh, how it goes out a little bit of like a... So I'm just raising cops as we go, uh, destroying things as we go as well. So we're just pushing line. I mean, you can see that it's a lot more exciting when it comes to uh, Greater Reef. Um, and I try not to die here because it'll have a, it'll, I'll lose one opportunity to... Well, a lot of, a lot of pets, man. I'll lose one opportunity... Whoa! So, okay, so that is it. And I've got one more bubble here. A lot of micromanagement, you have to see where the cops are. Yeah, and you have to be uh, managing quite a lot of things. You manage your, your, your essence here, but you also manage the number of like uh, demon up there. Not demon, the, uh, the army that you raise. Oops. Okay, next bit. Weakness consumes you. So I'm pushing line here, uh, there's the elite, try not to get uh, hit by this <laughs> electric orbs, you can die there, <laughs> seriously. Okay, so I mean Necromancer a little bit not as uh, durable, I think it's not as durable as my, as my, uh, what is it, uh, Crusader, but I guess it's different, I mean it's, it's a tank versus the range kind of thing, I don't know. This is a range build. Um, no. You will make a fine call. Okay, yet another elite using a blood golem to get it settled. I'm frozen. I'm but it's fine, I win. So, yeah, not my favorite map though, by the way. No. So let's see, maybe here. Cool. 
So just uh, keep a lookout on all the uh, resource that you have. All the corpses on the grounds are your resource, uh, so... And uh, <laughs> there's a lot of chicken there. And whenever you can summon some mages as well, if you remember. And the other one's already there doing her stuff. I'm trying to see where should I go. Uh, I think probably somewhere. Yeah, some map is uh, more friendly, the other some maps are not. Okay, let's do a golem there. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of corpse to raise and that's fun. Oh, there's a big chunk of stuff there. Let me do a golem there. Erase all the, uh, all the, erase the uh, minion there. Oh, that's nice. The Ravagers were among the most fearsome soldiers of hell. Having grown accustomed to the taste of war, they remained in Pandemonium. Long after the last siege of the fortress ended, now they regard the realm as their own and terrorize any angels who venture onto the battlefield. So now I'm turning back here. Uh, oh, that's the next level, thank goodness. <laughs> okay, power, uh, which is good. I think it'll be enough for me to head to the next one. I think after this, uh, the Guardian should be there. Just make sure you don't get bombed by this thing. There you go, the Rift Guardian is here. Yep, that's it. So, I've got two set items. Wow! And also, of course, a Legendary Gem. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, th that's what I meant. I mean, uh, the whole thing is just so, so fun. Um, the whole progression itself. I hope it gave you some idea of how to, like, you know. Yeah. So you can you can increase the the level of the gem. This one this one is for the pets, by the way. Um, so increase your pet damage. Right. So you got four chances. Normally you get three if there's a defeat, but if there's no defeat, they give you an extra bonus. And I've got two other set items as well. Let's take a look at that. Um, yeah, so this is the Torment 3 kind of thing, uh, not too taxing. I can identify all my items here. So I've got a boot, uh, I don't know what boot it is. Okay, a new transmod. So it's the, uh, wow, that is the Trials. Now this is interesting, I would like to show you guys something first. And I've got a Ragma shoulder item, which is also interesting. So now this is interesting because with this, I got a set of two, uh, which I'll get the minion have a chance to reduce the cooldown of army of dead by one second each time they deal damage. So if I swap my power around and have army of, army of the dead, then it could be rather interesting kind of approach. Another one is the boot here. Now the boot here is interesting. Why? Because now I have a set of three, but you know I can't earn the set of four because there's uh, a lack of one. But what I can do is that uh, because I've got. Um, in the past, I've got a ring. I think I can use this one. Let me see. Uh, I got the ring of the Royal Grandeur uh, that would reduce the number of items needed for set bonus by one. Uh, let's just go ahead with that and see what happened. Right. So now, hang on a second. Um, yeah. So that is reduce it. I think it should be now. I get. You see, I only have three items for trials, but I'm able to get a four item set, which is at full life. Your healing from skill is added to your maximum life for 45 seconds, up to 100% more. 
and also you know so so it's interesting i've got two set item mixed around but i've got three set bonus out from the whole thing because i have got a character before that helped me farm this ring and all in all how do i look like i look pretty awesome as well the two <laughs> the two combination is not bad uh, the bone and the blood all right so now uh last but not least of course because i've done some rift and i've You're got a bit more blood shot as well anyway this is my my new uh, score seven minutes uh, it's okay i think the map was a little bit uh, unfriendly there are some open uh, open area map that usually get a little bit faster as well um, so that is one and the last but not the least because I've got some blood shot as well 92 not a lot usually I wait for a little bit longer to do anything meaningful but what I could do is that I could in fact uh, purchase something either a bell item um, which one I needed most 70 70 uh, it really doesn't really matter that much uh, I could do either way I probably go for the uh, belt maybe so let's see the bell what a steal. I so, that. do I have anything upgrade? Probably not at this stage. Uh, yeah, so... Again, I mean, it's more like a extra chance because you play something. But if I do a little bit of bounty, uh, I will get a lot more bloodshot and I can probably, like, you know, try my luck a little bit more. So now, what have we got, really? I mean, um, I just casually run a rift. I casually run a greater rift. I upgraded at least two set items. I lost track already, but I upgraded, like, you know, I probably I upgraded this set item and I upgraded another set item um, and, and another one so I have three items already right so that was like I don't know how long gameplay half an hour gameplay uh, so I mean compare this one with Marvel Heroes if I was still doing the half an hour with daily Beogo terminal I probably wouldn't get any artifact I mean even if I get you know I may or may not be able to use it so yeah so I, I would say that this game is uh, really really fun uh, in many ways uh, but I mean, uh, do drop me a comment box below how you like your uh, Necromancer or how do you find comparing the two games? I mean, I'm not saying Diablo 3 is perfect. I mean, it, ha it has its pros and cons, but I'm really having a lot of fun at the end game perspective just to get improvement along the way. And uh, I'm just dying to go back in the Rift again, probably get a little bit higher difficulties and see what, what I go. Change my build a little bit now that I have a set items. Maybe I need to relook into the whole build. And that is the fun of it, to rediscover, to discover all the new build and evolve towards the end goal, uh, whereby it's going to do really hard content. All right, okay, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.